Hello everyone and welcome to the Malaysian Grand Prix here on F1 2017 Career Mode and we begin with a bit of bad news. We're going to be taking some power unit penalties. My logic for this is it wasn't really going great for you practice. Like we managed to do all our programs properly but to be honest our pace wasn't that rapid. Anyway it's to Q1 now. This is the only lap I actually did that counted so I'm just going to let you enjoy it. And okay, after that session we're P10, which wasn't terrible, so we're going to Q2 and we've done our turn that we need to do. Information time, we've lost oil pressure. Looks like a leak somewhere in the system. We're on standby for the time being until we can patch it up. Now normally this one, that'd be quite annoying, trying to get ready for a Banzai Q2, usually the option tie, but we don't care, we've got a power presser, so we're going to go on a set of full wets. Cruise around to do an epic 4 minute 20 lap time and there yeah, and we're out of qualifying. We didn't want to go any further. Just wanted to ensure that on arrival we can say we complete as much squad on as possible and get as many resource points as possible. As you can see there, yeah, we got resource points for Q2 even though we were <laughs> terrible by design, but whatever. So we got a completed qualifying for Nimajiggy. Unfortunately, time wasn't as quick as Grojohn's. Alright, we only set a competitive time in Q1, but still, that's not great. It's kind of a sign of the problems, really. Exaggerated, of course, as I've just alluded to. The team is not too happy with that, but anyway, it's time for the Malaysian Grand Prix, but before that, we're going to do a bit of R&D. As you can see, we've got plenty of points. Slightly later than it probably should have been, because we could have done this last time out. But we're going to help with the fuel consumption. While we're waiting on the major upgrades for the power, we might as well do something to the power unit. Then after an exciting qualifying session yesterday, let's take a look at how the cars line up. Sebastian Vettel will start on pole. Fantastic qualifying from the multiple world champion. And it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Raikkonen, Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton and Ricardo, Perez, Hülkenberg, Grosjean and Felipe Massa, Kvyat, Sainz, Esteban Ocon and Palmer, Alonso, Magnussen, Lance Stroll and Marcus Ericsson, Verline, and a McLaren rounds off the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. So Fernando got a penalty too. It ain't going great guns for the team, is it? Anyway, to the race stretch, and everyone knows it's going to be quite a bit of rain during the middle of the race. It's Malaysia, so that's not unexpected for it to be light though. Hmm, I don't mean suspicious of said forecast weather. I'm going to start in the option tie, which will give us the best flexibility and durability combination that we're looking for as a compromise we're going to fuel up because i've got great fuel efficiency now with our upgrades so we're going to ignore that and put in as much fuel as we decide so as we line up on the grid now p last well we can only go forwards from this so let's go when the lights are about to go out at any point now if they come on us of course there's one there's two there's three there's four and there's five And we are go for the Malaysian Grand Prix. We're actually going to knock us that relative to Ericsson who got a poor one. And we're going to be overtaking Verlang down the inside of the main strip. And this looks right for a dive bomb into the first corner. Yes, as we now up to P13. 
Rissov barked by the cars in front, that's to be expected. Sainz tries to hand it round the outside, as we know, head through two. And we managed to go around the outside of Ocon, and steal the inside line through three now. We're sort of stuck behind Massa, so we have to lift off. Now we're going to go on the inside of him, as we head down to turn four. Now we're going to go on the inside of him, and give you a Hulkenberg! Three and one! Superb move! And now, through the five and six sweepers, but nothing really happened. What I was going to say is, nothing really happened for the rest of the lap. Except this virtual safety car that we've got. But hey ho, we're back to racing speed now and appear to have closed a little bit under the VSC. Maybe Perez wasn't fulfilling his delta. I love how he said we got a purple sector 3 and then cars behind. Who had to adhere to the VSC last through sector 3, suddenly break that. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, game, I guess. Anyway, through turn three now, all is going well, and we are catching to the bigger point scores. So that's good. We see the Ferraris are actually uh, ahead of this train. They certainly can't be holding up this train, can they? Or well, whatever. Who knows? Only we can happen in Form 1, and it usually does. I am recording this video the day after the real 2018 German Grand Prix. <laughs> so I can simply say this without surprise, because I think this will be coming out of the Hungarian Grand Prix at the very least. As DRS is now enabled. What was going on with Vettel? How did he bin it? And Hamilton winning from 14th. But anyway, talking about winning from lower positions, we're trying to make our way forwards as we try and correct get Perez. Who is attacking Grodd running turn? So he's time to look in his mirrors and then look forward and then look in his mirrors and look forward. Because he's got that Haas and Alan McLaren to be dealing with. As we now heading to turn four. Uh, we close on in the brakes, but we can't really do much. We, we're quicker than him, visibly quicker, but. We can't do anything with it, we can't do anything with it, but we're not going to worry too much about it. It was ahead 3-5, and now into 6. Struggling with the dirty air, so we tried to take a slightly different line. It didn't work, but hey, help right now. Into 7, and now we're... This is where usually the weather comes from, by the way, in real life. The rain is a few laps out yet, but it is coming. Be careful. And it is coming, it is coming, Jeff says, so we're going to have to be wary. Now out of 9, now through 10, and now onto another lap as we move to lap 4 now, thanks to the cutscene, as we are 5.6 seconds behind the leader, and then four, that knows 4.7 seconds behind, so it's all going well as Perez and Grodger fight each other into the first corner. Who will win the battle of the midfield teams? It appears to be Grodger on for now, but we're going to traction out of 3 and be absolutely nowhere near. I don't know why I was taking that on, I'm so sorry. But we are closing through 3, and now into turn 4, we have got a good double slate stream going on. And Perez has got on the outside of Grodon. Will we be able to do anything with this? But Perez is staying with it. So he's going to have the inside line for E5. And he just about makes it work. We have the braking response. Because we didn't want to whack the back of Grodon there. But anyway. To the end of the lap now. Which is where the next action happens. We it's DRS versus DRS. But the upgrades to this Honda engine are actually working greatly well. And we are able to overtake the Ferrari powered half into turn one. I'm not sure they've actually put many upgrades on the Haas. His Ferrari engine. But anyway, that's P8 for us. He tries to stick with it, Grojum, but we've got it in the bag, really. But that means we can now focus on Perez and take P7. But he's pitting, so that's intriguing because A, because of the weather, so I wonder what's going to happen, but B, is his tyre wear poor? Or is his strategy just to go in a three? So that's very early, even if that is on a quality tyre. But now it is raining, it is raining, it is raining here on lap 6, so we're going to have to be very conscious about what we do. And Jeff is suggesting a strategy change. What has he got for us? I'm guessing it will be intermediates. But we accidentally cancelled the strategy change screen because we run on the command screen. Oh well, but we are paying for it anyway, so we need not worry about that. Here we are now. We're going a little wide, but... See, that's to be expected when we're on slicks. But anyway, we're going to be going to the pit line now. Thank you, Snapchat, by the way. Down to 50 miles an hour. And we see that guys who want are going on interest as well. So we're confident of the call that we've made. If we've got Jeff, the AI, making his stop. And to be honest, it felt like interest. It looks like interest anyway. So, bye-bye option tyres. Hello, intermediates. And away we go now. Bear in mind, there will be some teams, as DRS is disabled, who... We've wanted to avoid double stacking, and thus have kept their second cars in the race out there. Okay, For example, Pascal Verlaine. As we now leave the pits now, we're currently in P9. 
Now, I know this looks like we've lost two places, but it's only two. And B, there are people staying out of slicks when, quite frankly, it's not ready. As you can see, now, the way we power out our team and now heading to three, the way we just traction compared to Verline is, no, I know he's in a sound, but on quite bad qualities, but still. That's easy pickings, and we're up to P8 now. Hmm, I think Verline's going to be nowhere near in this race, I'm just reckoning. Now we're up to P7, because Palmer's pitted, of course. Any more? We're up to P5, P4. I believe what's happened is that the big three teams, they've avoided double stacking, and we've got in between the first group and the second group. So they'll have one horse each in the first group and second group, and we're sort of in the middle. So we've got Verstappen in front of us. I can tell you that I think it's Hamilton, Vettel, and Verstappen in front of us. But it's Raikkonen and Bottas and Ricardo behind us. So that's something to consider. We are slowly but surely catching Verstappen. But hold on, I think he's blown his engine. Yes, he has. We're up to a podium position through a little bit of luck. Yeah, Verstappen is a real 2017 luck coming. If a little late, but not realistic. Thank you, game. He 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 he. So, I think he's now going to be about Sebastian Vettel. 3.6 seconds. You're gaining by one tenth of that. We think they've got one more stop. The time last lap was a 1 minute 50.1. Yes, early catch by 110 for lap. So we're going to have to up our game here. But as we move oh, to lap 11 now. Well there, keep it up. We're looking at about 10 more minutes of rain. 10 minutes. See, we are closing. And that's intriguing to hear about the weather. That the rains are coming and then they're going to stop. Yes, so now we are starting to lose ground to that way. We're now, by the AI, getting used to the Inters as well as us. Yeah, we just don't quite have the pace of the big three teams, even in this weather. So. Jeff doesn't have the days for a weather report. Okay, I'll try and work that out. But anyway, Rackin has caused that why we've cut to this bit of lap 13. Um, but we're getting very good traction out the corners. That's to be expected on the intermediate conditions on this game. For some reason, you can traction out very well. Uh, you may notice, it particularly if you're doing a programming practice, and the delta just suddenly shoots up when you traction out the corner. Anyway, it's lap 17 now, and it's dried up enough to consider a use of slick tires. No lot was going on really, because Bell was drifting away from us, and Ragnar, although it was close, wasn't really making a threat. So there wasn't any notable events going on. We were just sort of, well, drifting away. Yes, Hamilton's going to the prime tyre. And that's what we're going to do, though. We're going to the prime tyre. Maybe that's what everybody's thinking. Because in real life, before 2017, anyway, if you wanted to be very good in these conditions on a slick tyre, bring out the prime tyre. And that's what we're doing now. And Val's on the prime as well. Ragnar's on the prime as well. So it's going to be a level fire. Because usually the AI tends to go the softest tyres possible. They've gone for the hardest. Which is what they usually don't do. Whatever, I'm not judging. And Fernando's in as well. He, we're able to double stack because of the gap between us. So, that's excellent. But Ragnar's giving some aggro straight away. Now that he's got DRS in order to help him pass us. He's going to go around the outside into turn 15. He's sort of handing out. We try and push him out. But he's able to just start staying on the outside. And he's now going to try and use the DRS. Down the main straight as we go to lap 19 now. 10 to go here. As for some reason, Jeff is talking about where Fernando is when we're trying to fight Raikkonen off. But no. Raikkonen, he managed to go around the outside. It's an excellent move. <sighs> you just, and for some reason, when the weather's like this in this game, me personally, and I think other players as well, from what I've seen from other career modes, just trying to keep up with the AI is impossible. Like, it's the only one time, really, where you underperform the car on level conditions with the AI. But anyway, on to lap 22 now. Mr. Daniel Ricard has caused, so we're going to have to be wary of the dive bomb, but there's only him and Bottas behind, so even if we sink to P6, so what? But he's going to try and go around the outside, gives us a punt. He loves punting us in the back, doesn't he? There's something about our backside and Daniel Ricard. I'm not going to make any more implications than that, other than it's on virtual F1 cars, so you tell me. But yes, we've had quite a few incidents where Ricard has just whacked our back, so... Has he lost a bit for a wing there? Will that make him uncompetitive? As he did at the British Grand Prix? As it did at the Hungarian Grand Prix, I think it was? Anyway, I can't remember. Anyway, to business. As we go towards the end of lap 22 now. And Ricardo is Hasnos, but he's been joined by Valtteri Bottas. 
Yes, he has. Sorry, it was the Italian Grand Prix, not the Hungarian Grand Prix. What am I on about? Anyway, they're going to have to go defensive into turn one now because Ricardo's out and Bottas is there as well with his Merc power. Here we are into one. We sort of take a middle line and then the inside line for two. But Ricardo and Bottas. Oh, I think Ricardo and Bottas are going side by side with each other. And yes, they were because Bottas is now the car on lap 23 attacking us. Is there any way to fend off this Merc power? As me force has got round the outside into turn 15. We just about reclaimed the line, but he's going to get another dose of DRS because there's only one detection point in 2017 for some other reason. Got rid of the second one for 2016. But that means him and Ricardo are going to go in side by side down the main strip into turn one. Who's going to win out? Because Ricardo has gone round the outside the battle like the real life Grand Prix. <laughs> well, okay, this game might be realistic after all. Anyway. We are moving further on to the lap because Bottas has caused yet again. Our pace is poor in the drive compared to the big three teams. Thanks, Billings. We have the pace for P7 on a normal day. That would be P6 now with Verstappen, of course, having retired from the race. So, okay, yes, we have quite a task in our hands. We know it's actually Ricardo is on the option tile, which is unlike everybody else. He's the only one in the top six to consider an option. That is also going to hurt him just a little bit more and a little bit more as time goes on. But he's still going to try and overtake us on lap 25 into the final corner now. He locks up though. Well, this gave Bottas an opportunity. Yes, he does. And Bottas is now ahead of Ricardo. But Bottas isn't going to stop there. He's going to try and overtake us as we go into lap 26. The anti ultimate lap of the race. And I'm going to have to go defensive into turn one. Yes, Bottas is going to try to go around the outside. He's breaking ability so much better than ours. But we just about hold him off. But no, we're going to have to give him some ring for him, too. Because he's parking his nose through there. But we've got good traction out of turn, Tim. And now they three. So briefly, we can focus on going forward. But it will be only brief as we now cut towards the end of lap 26. As the rapper Palap's going on there in front of us, obviously. As we're going to have to defend from Bottas yet again. Ricardo sort of handing back this time. As Bottas tries to take us into the final corner. And then tries to get the cut back. And he does. With a bit of archy bargy, that's fair enough. Because we've had a bit ourselves over the career mode so far. We're in our slipstream. His slipstream should have same. As we're now heading to turn one. We're going to have to do something quite dramatic here to reclaim the place. And we do. And Daniel Ricciardo has died. But we barged Bottas out of the way. It was wheel to wheel. So it's fine. Now into two. Looks like we were going three wide there into turn two for a moment. But no. We just about hold on to P4. Bottas returns P5. And Ricciardo still lurking there in P6. As Vals has the fastest lap of the race. And then Ragnan does. This is intriguing with what's going on at the front. But we're going to have to fend off the guys behind us yet again. They won't go away. And we can escape them, which is quite annoying. So have to go defensive into turn 15. Bottas again tries to run the outside and then tries to close back. We were well, wise that this time, therefore, dawdled through the final corner. And we're just about to curve the press onto the final lap now. But he's going to use that mech power to close up and the DRS as well. But no, he's going to have to settle behind for now. So it's just this last lap to survive. As Jeff, for some reason, he's badly... No, no, engine mouse. As Sebastian Vell does what he did back in those Red Bull days. And so the fast lap of the race on the last lap of the race. But we're not bothered about that. Master is out the race as well. Uh, Jeff is telling us that. It doesn't really matter. It's the last lap. Let me focus on Bottas and Ricardo. You know, the guys that were actually fighting this race. Bottas has turned on the party mode. Because he's going for us very quickly on the DRS. So, oh, we lock up so badly trying to keep him behind. But we've just about pinned him to the inside with a bit of contact. That's going to be P4 from the last. Thank you for all your hard work out there. That was a strong drive and a good finish. Well done. Thank you to the results now. So, 20th to 4th, that's a very good show. Fernando unfortunately only made it as far as P12, and there is a little bit of randomness with the midfield, that's to be expected with the double stack in Malaki, so all the teams grabbing points there, as we now head into the resource points, getting plenty of those, and accumulating quite a bit more, thanks to the first try, the bonus, which we are very grateful for, it's only a little bit, particularly because we're not going to get the big bonuses until way after the crate mode's finished, so we're not going to worry about that. Even seeing us off that race, it's our faster lap, I got a better finish, so it stays quite relatively me and Grosjean in terms of the gap. The teams are 
pleased with that result and the team that we're at McLaren in particular are very happy and the career score well that just means something so there's no point discussing it really anyway I forgot to show you the championship and I forgot to do this last time as well so I've made sure this time that we go into the laptop and show you what happened so now we're P6 in the championship we're closing on Ricardo We've started worrying about Ocon and Verschnappen, now folks on catching Ricardo, maybe even Bottas, you never know. And Vettel too. Could it really be? In the championship now, we are P5. We're honing in on Force India. This car's coming on really strong towards the end of this season, which is very, very good. So, I'm quite happy with what's going on. So, yes, that's excellent news for now. Anyway, we're not done quite yet because we're going to be doing some upgrades now. I don't think we can do in a power unit yet, because we're waiting on upgrades to come ahead. So we do a general, a general wear upgrade, because the gearbox is wearing after four races and you have to keep replacing it. I mean, sure, yes, we're able to take the power unit penalties at the same time, but, you know, it's slightly annoying. But anyway, guys, I'll see you next time. It's been a pleasure. Goodbye.